So it says an airplane is flying at a bearing of north 10 degrees west at 300 miles per hour. Wind is blowing at a bearing of north 50 degrees east at 75 miles per hour. Find the actual ground speed and direction of the airplane. So I'll get to what the question is asking here in a second. Um, for right now, let's just go ahead and graph the information. So we have a vector going at a bearing of north 10 degrees west. So we're going north 10 degrees west, 10 degrees west. Right, so we know that's 10 degrees. And it has a vector of, or a magnitude of 300. That's going to be our magnitude since it's a rate. We don't really have any other like distance you know, from there. So that's going to represent the uh, magnitude of that vector. Um, now, we should give this a name. So what do you guys want to call this? Like, like what letter should we? A? That sound, kind of sounds good, right? So we'll say A. A is our vector, and we can say the um, magnitude of this vector is 300. OK. Now, there's another vector that's going on, which is north 50 degrees east. But that one's not as big. That one's only going 75 miles per hour. So that's like right there. And so that's 50 degrees. Um, we can say that's going to be um, 75 miles per hour. And then what should we call this one? W. w sound good? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like both groups went ahead and got that done. Now, once you've sketched your vectors on a word problem, you understand at least what the vectors look like, the next thing would be to write an equation for each of them. So since we have the magnitude and the direction, the easiest form would be just to use the magnitude and direction formula. So this one would be 300 times the cosine of, now again, we don't want to use 10 degrees. That's a big mistake students make because if you type in 10 degrees into your calculator, your calculator, when you type in 10 degrees, your calculator is thinking that is 10 degrees. right? So you can't plug in 10 degrees. That's the bearing. You have to plug in 90 plus 10 degrees, which would be 90 or 100 degrees. All right, And then we can do the same for the wind. The wind has a magnitude of 75 miles per hour. And then this angle, again, don't type in 50, because 50 from standard form is up there. So we need to figure this out to be 40 degrees, right? And that was 100 degrees. OK. So therefore, we'll say the cosine of 40 degrees times the sine of 40 degrees. All right. So now we kind of need to understand what is the really the question asking. So we found our two vectors, and we found the equations for the two vectors. right? And with our calculator, we could actually figure out the decimal version of our component form if we wanted to, right? if we needed to. Um, now, the ground speed is basically as like you're on the ground looking up what is actually hap like what is the actual speed of the plane. So you got to remember, like if you're flying a plane, right? unless they correct the chain, unless they correct like the, the, the wind blowing on them and like either slowing or going it fast, it's going to be affected by the wind, right? And you guys know, like if you're running against the wind, like, or for instance, like driving a car, and if you're going up a hill, you're going to slow down unless you accelerate, right, to counteract going up the hill. Same thing, right? Or if you go down a hill, you're going to go faster unless you put on the brakes, correct? So we're going to assume that the plane is not correcting this wind gust. Okay, this wind blowing at them. So they are going to be impacted by the wind. So if you came from lunch and then you're distracting other students in the class, then that can be an issue, right? So we can find another seat for you if that needs to be the case. Because all students need to learn this since you've already learned it. Um, so what we want to do is this wind is impacting this, right? And again, if we want to think, well, how is it impacting this? You can think like, well, when we're looking at ground speed, we're looking at what is happening to the airplane plus the wind impacting it. We're basically looking for the resultant vector. That's what we're looking for. So when we say, what is like the ground speed and the direction of the airplane, we're really asking, like, what is this resultant vector? So you guys can see, I kind of completed the tail to head method. right? Here's the airplane. And then you complete the wind. And so you can see, like, does this make sense? If you have your airplane, you're going in this direction, and you have wind pushing you this way, shouldn't you go be going a little bit faster and be moved to the right if you don't correct it? Mm -hmm. 
Right? Does that make sense? OK, so that means our angle, when we find the magnitude, it better be bigger than 300, right? Because the, the wind's in our favor. And when we find the direction, it better be like to the right, like less than 90 degrees over here, right? OK, so let's go ahead and figure that out. Now, the problem is we got to figure out the, the resultant vector. we got to figure out what is a plus w. Well, there's a and there's w. So if you guys remember vector addition from last class period, you basically just add the first components together, add the second components together. So this is a lot to write out, because again, you can distribute these. But this is what you'd want to type into your calculator. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm finding the x component for my airplane and my wind, and I'm adding them together. I'm taking my y component of my airplane and my wind, and I'm combining them together. Now, you could do this individually if you wanted to, but I would not recommend doing it, because in my opinion, it just takes a little bit more math to do all that, and then you have to store it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to calculate these, and I am going to store, though, these values, because we will be using these values. So when I do this, I'm going to type in 300 times the cosine of 100 degrees plus 75 times the cosine of 40. And please confirm my correct answer here is 5.36 rounded. I'm going to store this as alpha A, because I don't want to use any rounded answers, right? That's bad. Let's go ahead and do this one. 300 times the sine of 100, close the parentheses, plus 75 times sine of 40. And I get 343? Yes? 0.65. And I am going to store that as alpha b. Now, does this vector make sense? Should it be a little bit over x and really high over y in the first quadrant? Right? Because obviously, remember what I could talk about in the first one? Like if you get something randomly, like two negative numbers, you did something wrong, right? So you know, make, make sure your answer makes sense. So if I need to find the magnitude of my resultant vector, well then, a squared plus b squared. Since I stored these. It's very easy. I don't want to use the rounded answers. right? I want to use my stored answers. So I'll just type in the square root of alpha a squared plus alpha b squared. And if I was going to round this to the nearest hundredth, I guess, that gives me, um, wait a minute, that's not right. What happened here? Oh, did I forget to store that? I did. Oops. My bad. Ooh. I said to store it as b, but I didn't store it. So square root alpha a squared plus alpha b squared. I get 343.7. Actually, we'll just do this as 690 to the 100. Is that the angle you're going? Oh, that's the magnitude. Right, so that is what, miles per hour? Yeah. Well, it's not really the distance. That's going to be the, the but it's the magnitude of that vector. Because we're representing the magnitude as a rate, right? Now, again, my point, does this make sense? Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense, right? It should be larger. So now, to find the angle, well, first to find the angle, we need to find theta. So that means I need to figure this out, good old theta. Now again, this is in the first quadrant. So when I do tangent inverse, am I going to get the actual angle? Yes, right? So I don't need to worry about doing like that fourth quadrant kind of thing that we did before. So to do that, to find this angle theta, I just say tangent of theta is equal to the second component over the last component. So b over a. That's. That's the magnitude. But is it under the radical or no? No, that already got squared. That's the ground speed. 
I, like, I took the square root of that. So that's it. Um, so let's go and do this. Tang inverse of um, alpha b divided by alpha a. And I get 89 degrees. 89.1 degrees, so round it to the nearest hole is 89. So that is 89. Is that now that's a direction, right? But since we're talking about bearings, should we give our answer in bearings? Yes. So rather than using um, 89 degrees, we should actually use what? We should say the direction is a bearing of one degree, or north one degree east. Now again, my answer is not perfect. Like this would be probably much, like much larger than that, 75 degrees. But you guys can see that it makes relative sense, right? It'd just be over the x-axis. Not too bad, All right? Okay. So there you go. That's direction. That's the magnitude of a word problem. All right. For the last problem, I need a volunteer.